talking to you, Dave. Can we do the health disparities um, bill? Yes, we can. You can? Yes, I think Teresa, um, I didn't mean to cut you off. I think Teresa sent this out yesterday. This is H210. You recall last night we approved $180,000, uh, uh, the appropriations piece. The committee, our committee is recommending, and, I'm, and I'll be calling this for a question shortly. I just want to quickly reframe it for people. We're recommending in three instances to amend H210 from the healthcare committee. The first one is just a technical. There was a typo. They spelled the word definitions wrong, but we fixed that. I can speak to that. And then the second one is um, we've said we, in the report section, we're saying uh, we're not guaranteeing funding for FY23. We want your, your Health Equity Advisory Commission to come back to us with a, as part of their annual report with what, if any, recommendations for FY23 should be in the budget to do their work. And then we renumber the section and we uh, authorize, uh, we recommend an appropriation of 180,000. And the, uh, any, anyway, so I'm, I, if it's, if it's appropriate and I, there's made a, I'd be glad to uh, offer an amendment. Okay, but may I ask a question before you do? Oh, of um, course. We agreed to pay the 180 in the budget. Do we need to appropriate it here too? Or should we take it out of the budget having appropriated it here? I don't know. And what would, what's typical? Um, Just Maria, leave it in the budget? You, take this yeah, step. Maria, are you there? These guys are so- Yeah, oh, yes, oh, I am sorry. here. <laughs> you're, trying to, you're trying to get your work done. We're talking about H210, um, which is, can, can we take your time for a couple minutes? Yes. Um, in H210, it proposes to appropriate $180,000 to the agency of administration for the racial, the, for the two positions associated with the um, racial equity director. Uh, for the health- Is it health equity? For the health equity. Health equity, yes. Okay. I'm sorry, health equity. Um, should we appropriate it in the bill in H210 or should we do it in the budget? What is the best way to do it? So we are carrying that in the budget line right now. Yeah. Um, the, let me just, we're trying to reconcile all the numbers, but is this a... I'm just trying to figure out if we had it in base or if we had it in. Last night we had it in base. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, um, yes, it's in base. I just checked. P, it's in section B100 base for um, health equity. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what we have. So we have it there. So we should take the appropriation out of the bill. Yes, yeah. and we'll we'll go and revise section um, B100 to reflect the 180 base. Okay. In the budget. In the budget. In the budget, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good, okay, thanks. Dave, that means that we need to not appropriate it in the bill. So, so we will be recommending an amendment in two instances. We're yeah. correcting a typo and we're asking the Health Advisory Commission to come back to us with a recommendation in their report for FY23 on any appropriations that might be needed, mm -hmm. period. Correct, or, yeah. but, but hang on, we've got some questions going on. Marty. So why put it in the base if we are not certain we want to continue it? We're gonna ask them for their opinion regarding future needs. I thought this 180 was for kind of organizational work and getting some consultants to help them out as opposed to hiring a, an employee to get them and organized that, and get them moving. And then ask, as Dave has said, for future needs. Which you're correct, Mark. This uh -huh. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, I apologize. Um, you are no. correct in your understanding. I guess it's there in the base. We don't have to, if they come back with a recommendation that doesn't sufficiently convince us, 
we'll move it elsewhere. Yeah, I understand. Well, you Mark. could put it in one time. You, you could put it in one time. I don't know I, how it ended up in the base, but it did. I may have confused things because I said racial equity when I started asking Maria. So we will, we will talk to her. Marty and Dave, will you please remember when, when we're going over the numbers to have a conversation with JFO about where is this? We did agree that we wanted to pay for this position. I mean, for, for this work, we talked about right. it, and we agreed to it. So I, I think I confused things when I said racial okay. equity and not health. And I think it probably is in the one time, but what- we're Why don't I send Maria, mm -hmm. why don't I send Maria an email and tell her we've approved moving it from the base to one time? Would that be okay? Yes. Um, yes. Whoa. Well, <laughs> oh, I just, can I just, I'm going to write this down. Um, I'm sorry. Um, what was that approval that you just did? So the recommend. Go ahead, Chair. Yeah, go ahead, Mary. So I think I was confusing when we were speaking earlier. In H210, we had we decided that we wanted to spend a hundred and eighty thousand dollars in I in one time money to support this. And I think when I asked you, I initially said racial equity, which is in the base. Yeah. And if you look at this again, I think the Alec, you'll see that we've made this money uh, in 180,000 in one time money for health equity. Oh, okay. okay. So go to the director of racial equity. So there's, yes, in, but in the base, I don't mean to complicate everything, but I just wanted to say what my understanding is. Yeah. Um, in the baseline, um, in section B100, we, there's two things. There's the 180 and there's the 250. And they both go to the Office of Racial Equity, correct? One, the 180 is for the health equity and the 250 is for the um, positions. Okay, or, so in fact, then we were just having a conversation and the 180 should be one time. Okay, so you want that to go to one time. Okay. Okay, let me just- Okay, yes, I will make that change. Okay, Marty, okay. that was what your understanding was. Dave, Dave, was that your understanding? It was a one time. Okay. Yes, so good. yes. Maria has that. We will- No, I think I have to, yep. And if I may, I was gonna ask Teresa, thought I said, or she is. Teresa, could, I think, could you reach out to Jen and just have her update this amendment or else there's going to be a technical problem because that's, it renumbers some sections. And that's a, we, that's a Kate, it's a Katie bill, not a Jen bill. Okay. Hey, Would no you reach one, out to Katie? You, will Teresa, you do that? Is that okay? I'll reach out to her. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, Darn it all, I thought we were so close to putting it away. Yeah, I'm Apologize. sorry. Oh, no, no, it's not. Yeah. not here. <laughs> okay, let's try. Thank you. So uh, we're going to have to wait on that one too. Um, Trevor, are you here? Yeah, hi. I'm here. Do you want to, are, are you, are we ready to talk about um, 183 and the amendment for the, this is the act relating to sexual violence. Yeah, I'm ready to speak to the amendment. Uh, we had some changes we need to make this morning, but I've gotten back from Ledge Council and I believe that Teresa just sent an email to everybody with the latest version, just to give you a little perspective. When we heard uh, the bill H-183, when we got to the appropriations section, uh, we had some concerns in a couple places. One, uh, breaking out the appropriation that was gonna support the uh, Intercollegiate Sexual Violence Prevention Council. And that we have sort of a standard practice, I guess, in how we break that out. We break out the per diems and then the other expenses related to that. And so we asked them to do that and they did that. Uh, our other concern was that they were referencing providing an appropriation to the Vermont Network uh, uh, you know, network against domestic and sexual violence. And uh, we were concerned that 
you know, we generally do not appropriate to uh, organizations that are not departments or agencies of the state of Vermont. There are exceptions to that, but in general, that's that's the general practice. Uh, so they went and developed a, a, an amendment. Uh, oh, the other part too was that we wanted a little bit more language around the pilot program, which was for the uh, Vermont Forensic Nursing Program. That was expansion from just hospitals into uh, uh, you know, general practice, if you will, uh, outside of the hospitals, and uh, and also some reporting requirements. Well, they came back with an amendment, and uh, what they did is they referenced the Center for Crime Victim Services as receiving the money, which is fine with us because that is a you know a department of the uh, state of Vermont. But they continued to reference that this grant would then move to the Vermont network. Uh, and we we talked a little bit this morning and said, well, it still doesn't really work for us. We need to remove the reference to Vermont network. So uh, let's council went back and I, I have a clean copy. It's been sent to you. And I'll just walk through where those changes took place. Uh, so essentially in uh, section 7A1, we be removed to the network against domestic and uh, sexual violence, which occurred after the Center for Crime Victim Services to provide a grant. And we just took that section out and continued on. Uh, in section 7A2, uh, after Center for Crime Victim Services to provide, we took out a grant to the network against domestic and sexual violence. In section 7B1, after Vermont Center for Crime Victim Services to provide a grant, we took out to the network against domestic and sexual violence. Section 7B2, uh, we, we, we removed the reference to Vermont Center for Crime, I'm sorry, we removed the reference to network against uh, domestic and sexual violence in, in relation to the reporting requirement and substituted the Vermont Center for Crime Victim Services. There was a C uh, in the original amendment, uh, draft 1.1 that referenced that the center was not gonna charge a fee to do grant making to the network. We removed that completely because we just didn't want the reference to the network to be there. Uh, we understand that there's a, a good understanding between House Judiciary and, and the uh, sponsors of the bill and the center and also Vermont Network about how this will probably go down. And, but we did want to remove those references uh, to the uh, private entity. So that's where we are right now. Thank Question? You. Yeah, thank you very thank you. much, Trevor. Um, Jim? Yeah, uh, Trevor, thank you for the work on the amendment. And I would move that we um, report it favorably. Oh, excellent. Um, is there a second? Somebody second it, please. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and Maida, um, so what she's she's busily going. Um, just letting okay. her. Yeah. Move, move to amend H183 with draft, what is its number, please? Uh, draft 2.1. With draft 2.1. Move to amend H183 with draft 2.1. Okay, got that. I'm ready, Madam Chair. Okay, um, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, would you please call the, um, I call the question or please call the roll or let's move yes. on. Yes, and the question before us is our amendment, House Appropriations <laughs> Amendment to H-183. Representative Fagan? Yes. Representative Feltis? Yes. <clears throat> Representative Harrison? Yes. Representative Helm, is he with us? Yes, he's 
What? Bob? You need to unmute, Bob? Uh, let's, we'll come back. Shall I go on? Yes. Okay. Representative Jessup? Yes. Representative Shy? Yes. <clears throat> Representative Squirrel? Yes. <clears throat> Representative Tolino? Yes. Representative Townsend, yes. Representative Iacobone? Yes. And Representative Hooper? Yes. Uh, Bob? Hey, oh, Bob is there. Yes. I'm back. I, I hit the wrong mm -hmm. button. It sent me out into La La Land. I'm a Bob, yes. You're a yes. And this is on the amendment, Bob. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So would a motion be in order, Madam Chair? Yes, it would. I'll move that we um, accept favorably H 183 as amended. Is there a second? Second. Second. What Thank was you. the voice? Uh, tre Trevor seconded it. Okay. Ready for the one second, oh, please. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Move to accept favorably H one eighty three as amended by appropriations. Okay, are we ready? Yes, we are. Yes, so please move. call the roll. Yes, I shall. Move to accept favorably H-183 as amended by House Appropriations. Uh, so, Representative Fagan. Yes. Representative Feltis. Yes. Representative Harrison. Yes. Representative Helm. Yes. Representative Jessup. Yes. Representative Shy. Yes. Representative Squirrel. Yes. Representative Tolino. Yes. yes. Representative Townsend, yes. Representative Iacobone. Yes. And Representative Hooper. Yes. Okay, 11-0-0. And Representative Squirrel is our reporter. That's correct. Okay. And so- And the... today, oh, I'm sorry, yes. So it's the usual process. Um, uh, there will be an email that is received um, and needs to be sent on to the clerk, and we should send this off. We want to get this needs to leave the committee today. So that's one yes. down. Um, okay, and um, Representative Pugh, thank you for joining us. I it's think. We are waiting to see for um, Katie McClinn to yep. join us. And um, we're getting, uh, uh, so Rep Pugh has joined us um, on H-171, the child care bill. Uh -huh. We had an excellent walkthrough of it. It feels like ages ago, but I believe it was just yesterday. <laughs> um, we, we had a few more questions about it and um, Kimberly has, this has been a, a work that Kimberly has engaged with the Hum Human Services Committee on. And I think we have a, 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 a proposal, a new proposal of amendment um, that uh, has been looked at by Human Services. And I, it was, it, why don't I stop and ask, uh, let you, Rep. Pugh, tell us where your committee is with where we are. Okay, um, and there are lots of things. Where, um, what I can say is the, um, the language that, uh, it, um, between when we reported the bill to you yesterday and um, right now, um, we heard some questions from you, from you all from Appropriations Committee. And um, upon further looking at it more closely, some questions um, and uh, concerns and new information from the Department of Children and Families. Um, so uh, we have tried to address all of those which, um, and uh, 
in I have not because we because the language is still being completely um, written. I've not been able to share the language entirely with the uh, Human Services Committee. I have um, been able to share the um, the general construct and what is um, sort of happening, um, and I can um, uh, I, I, and and I can say that. Um, the committee supports. I can't tell you whether it's an 11-0. I can tell you that a majority of the committee supports, and I will be able to tell you something else more definitively when we actually see the language. Um, uh, 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 Madam Chair, if I could um, uh, perhaps share a process, like how we're going to do this kind of question Discuss. Okay. Um, it is very important um, to the Human Services Committee that assuming um, that we, um, assuming the support of uh, um, our work as amended, um, that uh, we have the support of the, of the um, Appropriations Committee. It's really important to members of Human Services that they, um, that it is seen that, that we have ownership. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the um, amendment um, which we presented um, to you yesterday, um, we really can't, you can't amend that because it hasn't been offered. So the process would be, poor Katie, um, is that Katie would be amending the pieces that are, um, that. Uh, were of concern to you, the um, the bill as it came over to your committee, and then we, the eleven members of the Human Service Committee would put it all together. So, in other words, the amendment that you the the um, whatever date it is, the the one of uh, yesterday morning at ten fifteen, mm -hmm. that 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 would sort of disappear. Mm -hmm. And there would be a new one, which includes that as well as whatever changes are being addressed right now. So let's let's sort out the process piece. Uh, appropriations is in possession of the bill. Um, because we had some questions we've been working closely with in human services has um, come up with an excellent solution to our questions. Um, we're in possession. And so I'm at a loss as to how we, unless we hand the bill back to you, how do you amend it uh, rather than us amending it? We would be delighted, I well, expect, to well, get I new total ownership of I it. Know. Well, no, I mean, um, um, I talked to the house clerk and she is going to try to put this in writing. Um, this is an awkward way of doing it. Um, is uh, the amendment um, which that Katie is now working on language to try to address the questions that both you and whatever. Um, that just has to, um, um, rather than it amending the version that, you, that was titled 3.1 at 10 a.m., mm -hmm. she would um, amend the other one. And we would then come up with a third amendment or whatever it is, um, which would have, which would be um, the bill as we present the, uh, the, the, the language that we presented yesterday changed as is changed by the, um, Appropriations Committee Amendment. 
that making it based. I mean, so can I, may, may I jump in please? Absolutely. I mean, this um, is. I, I absolutely understand. And this has been the work of the Human Services Committee. An alternative could be that appropriations, which has possession says, we're, we found a need to amend it. And then Kimberly, as a Representative Jessup, as our reporter, can say this was a work of human services and turn it back to you in the reporting so that you have, I mean, your members are the ones who are standing on the floor and talking about the value of the bill. I, and I'm just thinking about how hard this is to do virtually. And I and and I, I appreciate and, and I'm not arguing with you. Yeah. And if this doesn't no. work, we will do what we we can accommodate what you're asking for. But why not just say here's the amendment and let you guys report it? Um, I guess I, um, I will go back to um, sort of members. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one, a little history. Um, the child care bill that, that the House worked on last year yeah. disappeared. If you go online, it says it died in the Senate mm -hmm. because it went, went into appropriations. And so there's a lot of um, strong feeling that this will be, this will be the appropriations committee amendment. And it will not be the amendment of the Human Services Committee. Okay. To, if, if, that's I, honestly, I mean, I, we're just trying to get the job done. I know, and um, I'm and I'm making it way more complicated in trying to be. Um, trying to be respectful from the of the trying to acknowledge the very. Um, strong investment and that several members of the committee have in terms of this. And it has as much to do with naming as it does with- Yeah, I appreciate it. So here's our deal. We are out of time to spend time on this. Mm -hmm. We need, there are appropriations late related questions that we must yes. be engaged on and we yes. must agree to. Yes. Um, I do not believe in, and I'm looking to my committee, I do not believe that we really have any stake or interest in having to be the reporter of, of this. I think we all understand your issue. We're just trying to get to the finish line. That's all we're interested in here and we are out of time to figure out how to do that. If you have approval from, the powers that be about an alternative way that will work, we're there. Okay. We just need to approve the portions of the bill that relate to us and we will take it from there. And we cannot take hours to sort out how to make that happen. Okay. Got it, got it. And I think we, I think that I see Katie has joined, Legislative Council has joined us. I think she has an amendment um, related to addressing the questions that um, you had as um, that we were directed to make some changes that you had and that the department had. Okay. So I am gonna... offering an amendment. I didn't yeah. understand. Are we offering an amendment now? If, if you were offering um, and you would be offering an amendment um, and the second, can, can we go over the content of these fourth okay, areas? Okay, maybe it'll become clear. So Katie, uh, Ms. McClend, can you help us with this? And do we have a copy of this? Have we received a copy? Um, yes, it should be in your inbox. What you have is probably an unedited draft. I'm locked out of the document right now because the editors have it, but I have, um, a, I have a version from my email when I sent it out, so I'll share that. Um, oh, it looks like wanna, I need. Wait, you want to share? Yeah, thank you, Tracy. We don't, oh, wait, we don't, do we? Oh, need, you don't share we, documents. Yeah. So okay. 
Um, I'll just walk you through it then. Hang, hang on, let us get oriented. So in our emails from Teresa, um, dated at 11.43 is a document um, that you're going to now walk us through. So members, do you have that? Yeah. Okay, people have it. Okay, thanks, Katie. So. Okay. So this has several instances of amendment and this is amending the human services amendment, not the committee report, the, the amendment. So the first change is in section five. The section five of the human services amendment pertains to the Bright Futures Information System. So and I, I'm sorry, I, I need I need to be oriented. So it's amending uh, um, the human services amendment. Um, um, Mary, this is the yeah. part that we are that, that will be complicated that you told us to figure out later. Okay. Um, we are um, so Katie, if you cannot worry about. Which, but okay, the section, I mean, and then say the content of it, but in terms of, we may have to end up amending what we um, did. Okay, no problem. So the first change would be um, with regard to the Bright Futures information system. And I understand that there was a technology modernization reserve that was created. Um, so in total, what the language would read would be in fiscal year 2022, 4.5 million is appropriated to the Agency of Digital Services from the Technology Modernization Reserve for the purpose of completing the implementation of the um, Bright Futures Information System Modernization Plan. So it's incorporating that concept of the reserve. And my understanding is that um... Actually, um, Representative Feltus, that this was something that you worked on and thought was important. Um, well, I simply go ahead, Marty. Uh, I sorry. simply thought it was important to list the Bright Futures project as part of many projects that this technology reserve is going to fund. And just not to mention the dollar amount in your particular bill, because we were already mentioning it someplace else. Your bill could certainly say, we are going to proceed with the bright futures in the next year or whatever you choose to say, but you don't need to appropriate the money for it yeah. because we have done that elsewhere. Yeah. We have in the budget, we are paying for the bright futures we've got it covered. So it does not need to be appropriated. Um, and so in, and, and I'm, this is where I'm getting lost. I'm not sure at what draft I'm looking at. If you're looking, Madam Chair, at the draft that you probably worked off yesterday, this would be on page four um, on line 12. And that's the version draft 3.1. Okay. So essentially, this is trying to catch up uh, this bill with the action taken last night where we moved the 4.5 million into the reserve. So my suggestion was that we referenced that reserve. I think it's, we don't wanna obviously double appropriate, but right. this was simply referencing the reserve. So, yeah. So on the draft, that I'm looking at that is dated 317 in section five, it says that we are, that 4.5 million is appropriated. We do not need to say that because we have appropriated it. Am I correct okay. on this committee, right? We've put it in, in the budget. We don't need to say it in two places. So A can be eliminated and so thank you for that effort to solve a problem. Kimberly, are you okay with that? Actually, no, I think um, that reference to the amount should stay in there. Maybe it doesn't use the verb appropriated. It simply says uh, in fiscal year 2022, um, maybe a different verb besides appropriated, but it still makes reference. Um, could it be the verb, and again, I defer to ledge counsel on this, could it be the verb 
uh, authorized, although is it already considered authorized if it's in the reserve bill? We are saying that there is $4.5 million for BFIS in the, in, the, in the big bill, in the budget. We have done that. No, I, I understand that. My, my, what I'm trying to do is to find a way to reference that action in this bill for those who care about the child care bill so that they can look and see that there's 4.5 million and it lives over here and it's already been appropriated. Is there a way to do that? Funds for um. the completion of the um, have been, I, I don't know. There Katie, you go, something along that, yeah. Katie can draft it. We just can't appropriate it here. Got it, yep. Funds for the, the completion of, I, I don't know, I don't, you need a verb, but it can't be appropriate, appropriated. How could, it, right, it could be $4.5 million um, uh, that is found in like the da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. Like it, ledge council work it. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. the intent though there. Just wanted to. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 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 The next concept is um, amending. Yesterday we spoke about um, section 10 which created a working group on the federal money coming in through the American Rescue Plan Act. And there have been some changes to that group. First, the group has almost been split in two with the initial group focusing on the child care development block grant. And yesterday's version, Building Bright Futures was um, the lead and that has been kind of flip-flopped. So DCF is the lead in coordination with Building Bright Futures. Instead of creating a plan, this group is creating recommendations. Um, the recommendations are to ensure that the um, block grant is fully utilized and the same priorities are to be considered. There's no longer language about administrative assistance coming from DCF. And yesterday's version had two report backs, April 30th and November 30th. This version only has a report back on November 30th. Okay. Um, committee, are there any questions? I actually, um, there is no, is there, is this in our jurisdiction even? You're describing a group um, that is going to do work? Are we paying per diems or doing any of that sort of thing here? The per diem language has been removed and it's my understanding from talking to DCF that that is something they can do within their budget. Okay. So this is all policy. It's describing how work is done. Okay, so thank you. I understand that the changes were made in response to questions we were raising so got it, but and but technically we have no jurisdiction. You've just taken care of the long-term funding kind of questions we have. So thank you, committee. Are there any questions on this section? I'm not seeing anybody raise a hand. So thank you. Next. Next is the second half. I said that we divided that that work group that we looked at yesterday into two pieces. The, the second group that's being um, formed is forming around the child care stabilization grants coming from the federal act. So the lead in language of this new section is very similar. There's a work group being created there. The stakeholders participating, um, that group's a little bit narrower. It doesn't have the business community and it doesn't have, I lost my paper with the other um, stakeholder we cut. Um, but this is for immediate and effective immediate use of the child care stabilization grants, which it's my understanding that 50% of that has to be um, obligated more immediately than the other set of funds. So what differs here is that the um, working group is to um, make recommendations. And once those recommendations are complete, the department is distributing those funds accordingly. And then there's a report back on September 1st of this year from the department um, that would 
it would go to joint fiscal and it would contain the working group's recommendations and also the department's conforming distribution of funds um, with those recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, can, can you point me to the lines, which lines it, it sends it back to joint fiscal? Sure, I'm looking at the bottom of page four, subsection C. By oh, September okay. one, the department shall submit a written report to JFC containing the work group's recommendations and the department's conforming distribution of funds. Um, and, and just, just for my understanding, um, this is just a way of informing JFC is I, 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 Rep Pugh, maybe, why do um, we need to know that? I mean, I would imagine that, that the policy committees would want to know that, but um, um, this I think, think? Um, my, in the bill at, in, it was a sort of convoluted process to ensure that um, there was some policy committee um, uh. influence. And um, it was way too convoluted and it was somewhat mm -hmm. um, whatever. And so we have um, adjusted it to, um, to one, um, to be very similar to what has happened in the past with the, um, when COVID money comes in. If it's off session, I mean, this group mm -hmm. will have um, two legislators, have some legislate two legislators as part of the group. And if it's off session, um, to um, have it come to um, joint fiscal um, just to, for, for in, so the joint, I mean, um, so that there is an, there is in fact, um, for both of these groups, the legislature, it, it's a, it's a marrying or a balancing between us being, um, not letting the department do things mm -hmm. in a timely way. Um, and um, so being too, being too overly involved to having some, uh, some oversight. Okay. And I mean, it's sort of, it's what, it's what it helped me if I'm misunderstanding what you did last year, which is, they would come and they say, this is how we spent the money. And JFC said, okay, makes sense. And um, the, the way it was organized last year is that we required, and, and Peter help me, the, um, but we said that a proposal could be made to joint fiscal and Joint fiscal had the authority to say yes or no, but that is not what this is doing. All this is doing is say, tell us what you did. If you are asking that joint fiscal approve it, I, I don't think it says, it just says, give us a written report. Okay. And, and uh, that was all I was asking is, yeah, um, why does JFC get a, a written report? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I have to say that um, we were still working on the language um, and uh, getting clarity mm -hmm. at eleven forty-five. Yeah. So you have raised a very good question, and I would, I mean, speaking for myself, I would say yes, they would, JFC um, would need to approve, but I don't want to say that without because without at least running it by um, uh, DCF. Okay, and um, I, your, the interest is, this is, is money being spent or is this just a proposal for how money will be spent? Now money, I mean, this is money might very well be spent. So why, why don't you, okay. yeah. You, 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 you need, 
if if you want some control, you need to put a yes or a no. You need to have a. It, it's not just report to us. It's it's approve. And I'm looking at you, Peter, as a yeah. member of Joint Fiscal. No, I, I agree. Otherwise, it's an FYI, and it becomes yeah. a okay. So then what? Yeah. Okay. Um, and and this is I'm perhaps putting. Um, Legislative Council in, in an awkward position that she can't be in. Um, some of the last part of this language was um, negotiated. What was she was the last? It was not a three way conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spoke with um, DCF, and their concern is that the money gets out um, quickly. So they, um, I had mentioned having some type of approval process. And um, my sense was that that would slow them up in getting the money out the door. So instead, um, what was discussed was a report so that the legislature would be aware of what the re recommendations were and how the money was used. If it's not supposed to go to joint fiscal, it could maybe go to the policy committees. Well, not um, during off, I mean, this is off yeah. session. Yeah. Um, um, you know, um, I, well, okay, let me just say, I want to say this is a decision for, for I think, your committee. Um, I would say, okay, fine, have joint fiscal approval. If that's if that's what happened last year, when, as money was being expended and you figure and joint fiscal was able to respond expeditiously, um, then um, then I think that it, that's a a, a good um, a good process to continue. And if it really is is troublesome, this is the beginning of a journey. Okay, so um, the interest is in having a yes or a no on this. So know that if if the no is there, that it delays sending money out. But if that's what what you want to accomplish, that can be handled that way. Um, um, what, what you're trying to do is to have some sort of oversight of what the working group comes up with, correct? And the oversight is the joint fiscal committee, which can say yes or no. And what, and some of it is to model it over what happened last time. Okay. And what I understand last time is that they had to come to joint fiscal mm -hmm. um, and that there were time okay. frames that they had to meet. And yeah. So you need to you you then then there needs to be an action that is taken. I think Katie understands that, so we can move on. I suspect. Mary, okay, thank you. Yeah, Peter. So I, when um, when Anne used the word expedited, that was exactly what I was thinking. Um, instead of saying it, it, you know joint fiscal committee process, um, request an expedited decision from the joint fiscal committee. Um, forcing us to, you know, do, do a quick meeting uh, to make that determination. Yeah, because we don't, you know, we don't meet. Otherwise, we'd meet in July and September yeah. and November, so. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. You're the chair. Yeah. I am the chair. You are the chair. Time. You are. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how about we submit a plan for J fiscal's review and approval. That plan is also submitted to the chairs of whatever policy committees are. And if we fail to act within X days of receiving the plan, it is approved. I think we've used five days, something like yeah. that in the past. Yeah. Um, is that the normal, if we get it, you know, we get it, we're asked if we approve, we do um, a kind of a, 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 there is a poll that is taken among members. If we approve grant, this is the grant process. If we approve it, it's approved. If it's not, we can have a meeting. So if we could set up something like that. D does, are Using you our grant acceptance process. No, that's a, that's a good idea on an expedited yeah. basis with five yeah. days uh, time frame. Yeah. Katie, does that track with you? That's fine. Yeah. Um, so copy's going to JFC. It's going to the chairs. You'll have five days to approve. 
Um, if you don't take action in five days, it's considered approved. If you choose not to approve it, you automatically set up a meeting. Yeah. Okay. Does that work for you, Rep Q? That gets you the oversight. Um, um, it does, and um, I saw that um, Representative Fagan um, had his thumb up, so I, so I was looking to um, Okay. In. okay. Um, so the fourth set uh, proposal of amendment. So in the draft we looked at yesterday, there was language, if you remember, about a, um, kind of a process in place for when to use federal funds and when to determine um, that general funds are more appropriate. So um, the proposal is to remove that language and that um, this new section be added to the bill that would apply to all um, funding in the bill. And this is, I guess, language you've used in other bills, um, but that to the extent appropriations in the act are made from federal funds, including state holding funds, established as a result of the federal act. The commissioner of finance and management is authorized to make expenditures in anticipation of receipts necessary. And the event monies received by the state under the federal act cannot be used for their designated purpose, then appropriations will be made from the general fund. And that appropriations in the act from funds provided in the federal act carry forward from fiscal year 2021 until expended. So this one does belong to us. So committee, look at this closely. Um, Peter? Can we make a one word change and, and instead of shall be used from the general funds, they may be used from the general fund? Otherwise we are potentially committing the general fund to a heck of a hit. Well, remember this is just for those, um, you, you need to read this with the, um, the language of the bill, all this is doing is talking about the um, um, scholarship money. It, it's 300,000, 300, 500,000 and 1.8. Yeah. Which we had agreed to do already. Right. We were right. assuming we were doing that out right. of GF. Okay. We yeah. were hoping that the ARPA would cover it. That's all we're trying to do is to okay. send it to ARPA first and then have the GF back us up. That's fine. I, you know, yeah. just reading the amendment, I thought yeah. it was the entire yeah. stabilization grants and everything else. I'm no, good. no, it's That's... just the workforce development yep. and training. Okay, yeah. no, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Anne? That was my, um, that was my question too. And I realized I'm now looking at a different amendment. It was my understanding that, um, that this change, I'm so sorry, that this change um, has nothing to do, has only has something to do with uh, workforce, not yeah. with any other piece of the bill. Yeah. I'll okay. be right back, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so this was at my request that we do this. Um, we, there was some different kind of tortured language before and I asked for this and I think it accomplishes what we wanted to do. And then the fifth instance, um, Ms. McLean. Um, we're changing the effective dates um, so that the new section added, section 11, that is kind of the second part of the two-part working group on um, federal funds coming. That's a new section. So that would also take effect on passage since that work is beginning right away. Mm -hmm. Okay, committee, any questions on that? It's pretty straightforward, I think. Okay, um, we don't have anything to vote on, so we're gonna have to wait to see what is produced and to understand how this goes together. Um, I, I had planned on this taking at the most a half an hour. We've spent an hour on this and we need more time. I, I just wanna request that, that uh, we need to limit the amount of time that we're spending on this. We are out of time to work on this draft. Um, mm -hmm. The committee has to turn to the budget now. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, let you let you guys go off and um, Rep Q, why don't you and I talk offline about what the strategy is for yep. managing this on the floor rather than taking committee yes. time. But um, 
we just, it, 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 we're out of time to work on this today. So I, I know we have to vote it out. So please figure out how to make it simple and fast for us. So we'll do. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, um, Katie, thank you very much for helping us understand it. And I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm feeling like I'm sounding terse and impatient and um, we're, I'm just, things are piling up here as they are with all of you. So thank you for your help and understanding this. So um, we'll let you guys go and do your work and we'll talk about it um, when it's ready for the committee to consider. Um, so thank you. Okay. We'll see you. Um, all right, folks. Um, Dave, are we ready to talk about the Medicaid bill? Are we there yet? Do we have language? H-153. Committee, I, I am... Oh, am I muted? You can't hear me? Dave is muted. Oh. I apologize. I, I have something from Jen. I was going to send it to Teresa and ask her to distribute it. How's that? Does that work okay? Yes, let's do that. Okay. Um, have we voted? We have not. Oh, we need an amendment on the health equity, right? We're waiting for that. To Katie's, uh, we asked Katie to do that. Yeah, poor thing. She's off doing other stuff. Okay. So just well, well, so that is going out and coming back to us so that we can look at H-153 for people's information. What we have that we are going to consider today, the only bills we are considering today are H-153, H-159, H-171 and H-210. So the Medicaid reimbursement, the Commerce Bill, the Child Care Bill, and the Health Equity Bill. Those are the only bills we are considering today. The plan was we were done with them by now, but so much for that plan. I know that we are in your lunchtime. So um, we should have we do have um, the draft on H-153 of a proposed amendment. Can you walk us through it, Dave? Are you? Yes, I'd be glad to. So um, what we're doing in section two, we're deleting where it says the secretary of services shall establish. We're deleting the word establish and saying the secretary of human services shall determine payment rates. So there's a difference there. He's not he's, he will calculate, he will determine the payment rates. Um, and when determining moves on now, it's line 17, uh, says when determining these rates, the secretary shall adjust the rate amounts to take into account the fall uh, to include the following. And then that gets into what's guiding the secretary is that it's a reasonable cost um, of the providers, any government mandates, we haven't changed yet. That's the same thing that was in the bill. Then it moves on and it says, again, it, it deletes the word establishing and replaces it with determining reasonable and adequate, just governing the rates. And then moves on and says the secretary, um, uh, again, deleting the word establish and saying, well, determine, determining payment rates for our recommendation. Then it, then it goes on, and this is new language here, and I'm gonna read it to you. The secretary shall determine payment rates for providers of home and community-based services in accordance with this section, at least annually, and shall report these rates and the amounts necessary to fund them to the House Committee on Appropriations and Human Services and Healthcare and then um, also menace, mentions the Senate. Yeah. So they haven't established the rates, but they've determined uh, what they should be and they tell us what they are. So as legislators, you would know that it's not automatic, it's not mandatory, but if you want the providers and the home and community-based services to get reasonable rates, 
to care for the populations they serve, here's what it would cost. And then it moves on, um, says the, uh, it just deletes that, that the secretary has responsibility for establishing rates and in search determine or determining throughout the rest of the document. And I'll let Peter jump in if I misinterpreted anything. No, you didn't. This was, um, you know, this was a really good compromise on the part of, uh, of, of all. And um, I, it does what I need to do. It, 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 it's going to require, we will get information every every year to to make a determination on i have no problem as i said making hard decisions i just have a problem when somebody tells me what i'm going to do yeah yep. and I, I think it's a good compromise so we don't have a negative vote that was yeah. i didn't want this to be reported yeah. adversely it would just uh, yeah yeah we, we may regret asking this question because we're going to see how underfunded well, these entities are um but that's our job so I'm, I'm comfortable. Uh, so thank you for doing this work. Committee, do you have any other questions? Jen is sending it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump in without being recognized. Go ahead. I think Go ahead. Jen is sending it to the editors. So it will come back to us camera ready to make, uh, to vote on. Okay, do we, do, committee, do you want to wait or can we vote on this as we have it? I think people would like to vote. Maida, are you yep. okay with that? Let's let's vote I'm, on I'm, it, and with the understanding, if there's a change, we can take it back. Uh, uh, so I've got move to amend H one fifty three with draft one point two language, which is what it is, correct? Draft one point two. Yes. Okay. Is somebody moving it? Would someone care to move that? Uh, I I would Dave I will make the motion to move and I will second. Okay. Good. Are we ready for me to call the roll? Please. Okay. Moving to amend H 153 with draft 1.2 language. Representative Fagan. Yes. Representative Feltis. Yes. Representative Harrison. Yes. Representative Helm. Yes. Representative Jessup. Oh, she's off with Will. Uh, oh, oh. Not here. Representative Shy. Yes. Representative Squirrel. Yes. Representative Tolino. Mm -hmm. Not with us. Not here. Yeah. Uh, Representative Townsend, yes. Representative Iacovone? Yes. And Representative Hooper? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm ready if there's someone to make this motion. Okay. Move, to, move to approve H-153 as amended by House Human Services and further amended by House Appropriations. So moved. Second. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay. Madam Chair, are we ready? Yes, please. Okay. Um, Representative Fagan. Yes. Representative Feltis. Yes. Representative Harrison. Yes. Representative Helm. Yes. Representative Jessup. Representative Shy. Yes. Representative Squirrel. Yes. Representative Tolino. Representative Townsend. Yes. Representative Iacobone. Yes. Representative Hooper. Yes. And we'll hold this open, Madam Chair, till yes, our, please. our two people come back. Yes, please. Okay. So remaining in terms of bills now, are the Commerce Bill, and Tristan's out working on that, the Child Care Bill, Kimberly's out working on that, and we're simply waiting for an amendment on the Health Care 
equity bill um, in the poor pledge council is working on the child care bill and she'll get to us I'm sure as soon as she can. Um, and I don't think we can act that that one has changed I think enough that we probably ought to see the draft. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey Maria. So you. Uh, yep. Hi. Wondering how you guys are doing in terms of having something from the budget for us to look. I'm, I'm not pressuring. Okay. I'm just wondering about timing. For Steve, the oh, when do you think we'll have this, Steve? <laughs> okay. Um, so, Mary, are you guys interested in going off and having lunch? I think we should. I think people <laughs> really want to. I would yeah. like you to have lunch too. I just want to tell them when to come back. Okay, so how about, um, um, I've got Steve on the phone. So how about we say 1.30? Is that okay, Steve, 1.30? So Steve and I are just like doing some last minute check, yeah, sure, you know? So can we have till 1.30? Is that good? Absolutely. Or? Okay. So, and you know what? Why don't you take until two, committee, we will get back together at 1.30 in the hopes that we have another bill to move. Yes. And we'll do that and then we'll turn to the budget, okay? So let's take-